Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to explore about chapter 13, Magnetic Effects of Electric Current, topics 13.3 and 13.4. First, let's begin with 13.3, that is, force acting on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field. Before entering in the, into this particular topic, I would like to ask you a question. What happens when two magnets are brought together? Yes, when two magnets are brought together, of course it produces a magnetic force. That is, either an attractive force or a repulsive force. You already know like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other. So at the end of this time, I would like to tell that when two magnets are brought together, it will either produce an attractive force or an repulsive force but still it will produce a magnetic force. So likewise, when a current carrying coil and an external magnet are brought together, there also a magnetic force is produced. Let's explore. Here, a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field. When a current is passed through a conductor, as per Hans Christian Astrid, we already know that it produces a magnetic field around it. Now, it is placed near an another external magnet. When two magnets are brought together, how it produces a force? Likewise, when a current is passing through a conductor, is placed near a magnet, then also a magnetic force is produced. That's what we are going to explore in this particular topic 13.3. Remember children, in the previous topic, we learned that when a current is passed through a conductor, it produces a magnetic field around it. This breakthrough was made by Hans Christian Oersted. Is it? Yes. The magnetic field produced exerts a force on a magnet placed in the vicinity of the conductor. That is, a conductor acts as a magnet when a current is passed through it. So, around the conductor, a magnetic field is also produced. Now, if an another external magnet is placed nearby the current carrying conductor, because of the field interaction, a force is produced. That's what we are going to explore in this topic. This was proved experimentally by a French scientist, Andre Marie Ampere. He suggested that the magnet must also exert an equal and opposite force on the current carrying conductor. And also, this force due to the magnetic field acting on a current carrying conductor can be demonstrated through the following activity. You could see a circuit at this particular moment. Consider an aluminium rod AB of about 5 cm. It is being suspended horizontally from a rigid support. This aluminium rod is connected to an external circuit which consists of a battery, a key, rheostat, all connected in series. Make sure the current flows through the rod AB. We know that when a current passes through the conductor, it produces a magnetic field around it. Now, as per the concept, the aluminium rod acts as a magnet. Next, Place a horseshoe magnet in such a way that the rod lies between the two poles with a magnetic field of the external magnet facing upwards. Which means the north pole of the magnet placed vertically below and the south pole vertically above. It is observed that the rod displaces towards left. Now the direction of the current is changed by changing the terminals of the battery and repeat the above procedure. Now the rod is displaced towards right. Now again change the direction of magnetic field by interchanging the two poles of a magnet. Once again it is observed that the displacement of the rod changes its direction. So whenever the current and the magnetic field is changed in the given setup accordingly the rod also behaves or displaces which means that the force F, the current I and magnetic field B are related to each other. When all these are put together we get a formula like this that is F is equal to B I L where L stands for length of the conductor. So whenever magnetic field current 
length is increased or decreased accordingly the force is also changed after certain trials of the experiment it is proved that the displacement of the rod is largest when the b and i are perpendicular to each other in this condition we can use a simple rule to find the direction of the force on the conductor this rule is named as fleming's left hand rule stretch the thumb forefinger and middle finger of your left hand such that they are mutually perpendicular to each other if the forefinger points in the direction of the magnetic field the middle finger in the direction of the current then the thumb will point in the direction of the motion or force acting on the conductor yes here you can see the devices that uses current carrying conductors and magnetic fields i have listed few devices over here electric motor generator microphones and measuring instruments that's all about 13.3 now 13.4 electric motors these are all the sub topics to be explored device principle construction and working electric motors are everywhere almost every mechanical movement that you see around is caused by an electric current basically electric motor is a device which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy the principle used in an electric motor is force acting on a current carrying conductor where it is placed in a magnetic field and the direction of the motion is given by fleming's left hand rule here you can see the parts of an electric motor and construction of an electric motor the parts of an electric motor consist of a rectangular coil ab of an insulated copper wire an external magnet split rings stationary carbon brushes and an axle construction a rectangular shaped conducting coil is placed between the poles of a magnetic field of the external horseshoe magnet the ends of the coil are connected to the two halves of the split rings p and q the inner sides of the rings are insulated and attached to an axle the external conducting edges of p and q touch two conducting stationary brushes x and y now comes the working of an electric motor when the current is passed through the coil a magnetic field is generated around it since the coil is already placed in an external magnetic field because of the interaction of the two fields the force is exerted that force makes the coil to rotate by applying fleming's left hand rule for the direction of the force the current flows inwards and the magnetic field flows from north to south and we find the force acting on the conductor is downwards so such that the force which makes arm ab to rotate downwards pushes and cd arm pushes its upwards and rotate in an anti clockwise direction after half rotation q makes contact with brush x and p with brush y that is the direction of current in the coil get reversed along the path dcb let us analyze the working little more deeper here you can see the rotation of the coil in step by step from 0 degree to 90 degree 90 degree to 180 degree 180 degree to 270 degree and 270 degree to 360 degree in first diagram that is from 0 degree to 90 degree shows that the coil is powered a magnetic field is produced around it and it starts rotating at 90 degree to 180 degree the brushes loses contact with the split rings and the current stops flowing through the coil however the coil keeps turning because of its own momentum that is you can see the splitted ends of the split rings or near to the brushes so 
the brushes stops contact with the rings at 180 degree to 270 degree the sides gets interchanged and the coil keeps rotating as a result q makes contact with brush x and p with brush y at 270 degree to 360 degree that is the fourth diagram again the brush loses contact with the split rings so no current flows but still the coil rotates due to its inertia of motion so this is how the working of an electric motor happens this is how a coil rotates in an electric motor now comes the actual rotation of the coil in an electric motor have a look at that guys commutator a device which is used to reverse the direction of current reversing of current is repeated at each half rotation giving rise to the continuous rotation of the coil and to the axle the direction of current changes every half rotation so here a device is used to change the direction of current is called as commutator in this particular case the split rings are acting as the commutator now these are all the corrections made in daily usage motor that is commercial motors an electromagnet in a place of a permanent magnet large number of turns of the conducting wire in a current carrying coil and a soft iron core is been inserted inside the coil or a soft iron core on which a coil is been bonded is called as an armature so why all these changes are made all these changes are made for a commercial motor in order to enhance its power so that's the end of this video next comes the follow up watch it and do it yourself